What is going on, my people? It is yours truly, Jay Smoothie, and I'm here to help cover the entire NFL season. Now, my normal co-host, B Money, uh, is busy this week, so your boy is going to kick off the season for all you guys. <clears throat> we are on mybookie.ag. I'm basically going to give you guys all my bets and picks for the NFL season. I'm going to do something a little different this year. Um, last season, it was mainly... NFL football. This year I'm going to do NFL and I'm going to do college. That's right. However, I'm only going to give you a three piece and a biscuit, meaning I'm only going to give you my top three college football plays. It could be the biggest game of the week. It could be a low end game. Only three college plays because there's way too many games, way too many colleges. So my top three plays and I might throw in a bonus or two depending on the matchups in the week, but this week I have three good ones for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. First with the NFL. Tonight we have the Buffalo Bills going up against the Los Angeles Rams in LA. The Bills are actually favored by two and a half points. I don't like that. I actually like the Rams at home. Uh, the Rams are a dog here. I say go ahead, give it to the reigning uh, Super Bowl champions. I believe the reason they are a dog is because of the Super Bowl hangover, Super Bowl curse that always plagues every single Super Bowl team that wins. They always struggle out the gate. So uh, even though Buffalo is going to have a good season, I believe they're going to get derailed tonight. Now let's go ahead to Sunday, shall we? Uh, the Browns and the Panthers, very quickly. Uh... This is a Baker Mayfield revenge game. Um, I believe he's going to get his revenge because the Browns will not have Deshaun Watson and that team complete until Week 12. So it's going to be a struggling 11 weeks for the Browns. The season's pretty much lost for them because by the time Deshaun comes back, we'll only have like basically five games to play. Um, and the only way though, the only way the Browns will really still be in it is if Jacoby Brissett can give them maybe six or seven wins. Seven wins would be great. Sean could take it from there, but uh feels kind of lost for them. I'm going to pick the Panthers. Uh, Baker will get revenge here, but one thing about the Panthers, they're going to have a tough season this year. I mean, McCaffrey, too many question marks. There's some weapons for the Panthers, but not too many. Matt Rule trying to build a defense, and it's okay, but it's certainly not good enough to keep the Panthers in games. They'll win this one, but I, uh, I'll say buyer beware for the future. Next, we have the Saints and the Falcons. Nice inter-conference matchup to begin the season. I'm going to go with the Saints here. Well, actually, no. No, oh, well, you know what? Thinking about it a little bit, I'm probably going to go with the Saints. Um, Atlanta, we're going to see what Desmond Ritter and what Marcus Mariota can do as well as the rest of that squad. This is pretty much a rebuild year for the Falcons. They're trying to get their life back together. Um after pretty much blowing it all up and finally getting rid of Matt Ryan. So I'm going to go with the Saints here. Uh, this is a chance for Jameis Winston to have a breakout game and start the season on the right note after injury pretty much derailed his season last year. So I'm going to pick the Saints. Let's see, minus 230. Oh, yeah. I like that. Uh, 49ers and Bears, easy. 49ers all day. The Bears are a mess. Justin Fields has no offensive line to help him. Uh, somewhat of a running game, but not a good one. Uh, the receiving core has a lot to be desired, along with the defense. And the 49ers, of course, they're retooling. They now have, I believe, Trey Lance as a starter. Jimmy G there is still there, pretty much going to be the backup, I imagine. And, uh, yeah, they're going to start a brand new era, and I think uh, it's going to start off well for the 49ers. I'm next. Patriots and Dolphins. Wow. Normally I would go Patriots here. That's kind of the kind of the traditional route for me, but I don't know what to make of their team. I don't know what to make of Matt jo Mac Jones. I've been critical of him in the past. Uh still haven't seen signs that he'll be any good this year. Uh and as for Bill, old hood, the old hood, I don't know what tricks he has up his sleeve. He better come up with something, man, cuz that team is uh it looks like it's going to be all Bill and uh, institutionalized motivation to help get them through the season. And with that being said, give me Tua and the Dolphins. The Dolphins have retooled. They look great on defense. They 
have it together on offense, have some more weapons there. I think uh, Tua will come into his own this season, and it will start uh, at home against a division rival. Another easy game to call, Eagles and Lions. But let me tell you, though, Detroit, they're not slouches this year, man. Motor City, Dan Campbell, the new head coach, has that team locked and loaded and motivated. A lot of young guys, a lot of young talent. Jared Goff still sucks, but the rest of the team does not. Not to mention, uh, you know, they they have some rookies that can come up big this year for them, especially uh, Walker on defense. Uh, give me... Give me the Eagles here. Eagles get this win. Uh, I believe Detroit will win some other games this season, but they're they're going to start off a little slow here. I think this game will be close, though. Just like with every Detroit Lions game, they're not going to get blown out. I see like maybe a, like a, a field goal touchdown sort of separation between these two. Eagles win by 7 or 3. Uh, I see the Lions is at minus 4, plus 4. Yeah, that's about right. Minus four sounds good. Even though, go for the Lions plus four, just in case. Uh, Steelers and Bengals, easy the Bengals. If any Super Bowl champions, uh, they're looking to come back with a vengeance. They're looking to uh, have a much better regular season than last year where they barely got in the playoffs then went on that lucky run of the Super Bowl. The Steelers, they're retooling this year. They have Mitch Trubisky as a starting quarterback, which lets you know they're not going to win anything this year. Uh, Mason Rudolph is also trash. Kenny Pickett looks pretty good as a uh, as the rookie from the University of Pitt, but he is, I believe, third string, and a lot of people in Pittsburgh are pissed off about that. So I imagine the Bengals are going to take advantage of the Steelers' bad quarterback choice because, let's be honest, Mitch Trubisky is terrible. You don't start him. You have him as a backup for when your rookie screws up. Uh, the Steelers got it backwards here, so give me the Bengals at home. Colts and Texans, very easy. <clears throat> the Colts are going to take it. Uh, they have Matt Ryan. They have a, a high-powered offense. That defense is getting better. The Texans are a mess on both sides of the ball. No Deshaun Watson. No direction. Uh, I forgot who the new head coach is, but he he has been given a, a trash heap there in Houston. Houston's going to get ran over. Let's see, Ravens and Jets, too easy. Joe Flacco versus Lamar Jackson. Give me Lamar Jackson. Uh, Joe Flacco was washed. Zach Wilson's hurt. And Mike White is an underachiever. Their quarterback room is garbage, just like the rest of the team. They had a better draft than in past years. They have a great running back in Brees Hall. Some great weapons on offense to the Jets, but... It's still the Jets. They need time to get their lives together. They need time to retool under a new head coach. The Jets will lose here. I will say this, though. The Jets are going to have a better season this year than they've had in a long time. That does not mean playoffs. But what it means is they're going to win a lot more games than they did last year and in previous uh, non-playoff appearance having years. I think the Jets are bound for some success in the future. But it ain't going to start Sunday, sadly. Uh, the Jaguars and Commanders. Oh, boy. <laughs> DC fans are now going to have their first taste of their beloved Burgundy and Gold with a new name. The Commanders, which sounds like the name of an indoor football league. I mean, I mean indoor football team. Like something you'd see in the Arena Football League or something like that. Um, against the Jaguars, who are also terrible. The Commanders are actually favored in this game, and they should be, and I'm going to pick them to win. Now, Carson Wentz starts off hot, usually falls off at the end. That's how he left Cleveland in, se in essentially under a year. Um, as for the Jaguars, they got a retool under a new coach. Now they don't have that failure, um, Urban Meyer, that NFL failure. Of course, collegially, he's you know a god over in Ohio, but... Once he comes over to the NFL, he's trash. He's just like Nick Saban. You know, a college football coaching god, but then you bring him to the top level, the NFL, and they just crash and burn within an instant. Um, go ahead and give me the commanders here. Jaguars are a mess. Uh, let's see. Chiefs and Cardinals. Give me the Chiefs. The Cardinals are going to be a team to watch this year now that Kyler Murray's been paid. As a new offensive weapon... In Hollywood Brown, who is replacing Bernard Hopkins, who has been caught as a drug cheat. And I believe he's going to be out for like six games, something like that. 
Uh, actually, I think he might be out for the season. I forgot the suspension length. But anyways, uh, he won't be in this game, that is for sure. And because of that, the Chiefs are going to run over them. The Chiefs, of course, are the Chiefs. They still have all their weapons, still have Mahomes. Uh, they lost Tyreek Hill to Miami. And, of course, seeing Tyreek Hill in Miami will be a lot of fun. So I know they're going to miss Tyreek Hill, but still, I believe they have enough weapons to still be the Chiefs that we know. Let's just hope that uh, the Chiefs can keep it together this year. Giants and Titans. Titans all day. King Henry back. Um, Willis on the bench, but a good quarterback still in Tannehill. rest of the team looks pretty good. Um, everybody else looking pretty good for the Titans. Giants, disaster. Uh, that coach came from Buffalo. He's probably going to regret <coughs> joining the wrong New York team. Should have stayed with the Bills. Uh, not to mention Danny Jacobs is trash. Uh, Saquon Barkley has no line to block for him. So, unfortunately, he has been regulated to trash as well. It's not his fault. Uh, the organization has done nothing to protect him. So, unfortunately, he's as bad as the rest of the team around him. Uh, and they're gonna get, uh, yeah, they're gonna get skull dragged. Five and a half points is nice. It's probably, the line should be way bigger. The Giants are gonna be a disaster this year. Speaking of disasters, the Vikings are gonna be a disaster, uh, when they play the Packers. Cutting Kellen Mond, the rookie from Texas A&M, rookie quarterback developing underneath of Kirk Cousins was a dumb idea of the Vikings. They brought in a new Nigerian GM who's already screwing things up. Uh, the only good thing he's done is pretty much say, yeah, I don't want to commit to Kirk Cousins in the future, which is smart because Kirk Cousins is a bum. Now, with that being said, uh, the Packers are going to beat them up. Uh, the, a lot of people are picking the Vikings to win a division. They're not even going to make it to the playoffs. I will be shocked if they win more than eight games. Give me the Packers. I want the Vikings to bottom out this year personally. That way, the new coach can have Kirk Cousins shipped out of town because Cousins, as long as he's quarterback, the Vikings will win nothing. They will have a great defense, fun offense, but they will win nothing because of the bum quarterback at the helm. Kirk Cousins is a career loser. So as long as that career loser is under center, unfortunately the losing is going to trickle down to the rest of the team. So give me the Packers here. Raiders and Chargers, I am looking forward to this game. This is going to be very exciting. The Raiders are retooled. Have a brand new head coach. And of course, uh, they are going up against a Chargers team that is hungry. Uh, Herbert had a breakout year last year. He is looking to improve again. And of course, the Raiders are looking to improve since now that they have McDaniel, a new coach, and a coach that actually has faith in Derek Carr, I think the rest of that team can excel. That being said, give me the Chargers. The Raiders are going to need some games to get used to the new regime, the new coach, the new system, all that stuff. The Chargers. They already know what they won. They won a championship, so give me the Chargers. Shout out to Sean Merriman. Uh, let's see, Buccaneers and Cowboys. Give me the Cowboys. The Buccaneers are in trouble. The Bucks. Uh, Tom Brady is a broken man. At least he looks like it. Um, trouble at home usually translates to trouble in the locker room and on the field. Uh the new coach, I believe it's Lovey Smith. No, not Lovey Smith. Somebody. Whoever the new coach is, I feel bad for him. Uh, Bruce Arians got out at the right time. The new coach is running right into a disaster. Uh, Brady wasn't even there for training camp. Of course, everybody's going to say, oh, it's Brady. He doesn't need to do it. But he's very old, so he doesn't need the reps. Uh, and with that being said, he is in freaking danger. He is in danger. So with that being said, give me the Cowboys. Good dog right there to pick. Quality dog. Uh, and then, of course, uh, let's see. That is, what day is that? Ah, that's Sunday night. Now, Monday night. Broncos, Seahawks. Give me the Broncos. Russell Wilson now has a new squad. He is now in Denver. Denver is pretty much a ready-made team that needed a quarterback to help get them over the hump, and Russell Wilson would be that. These Seahawks are in danger. Sailboat knows Pete Carroll has blown up that team. Uh, their quarterback situation is a disaster. The offense is a disaster. The Legion of Boom has died, and there's no resemblance of uh, a new age of it coming back. That team is done. They're pretty much fried up like a uh, catfish. So go ahead and give me the Broncos. Now, 
I have mentioned before. I have mentioned before. I'm going to give you three college plays this week, folks. And since you have my NFL plays, let me go ahead and give you the college. Now, I'm going to provide three here. Three of my best. I see Louisville is a dog against UCF. UCF gets way too much hype for a school that only had one undefeated season and claims they're national champions, even though they're, they're technically frauds. Yeah, they're a national champion since they went undefeated, but they claim it. They even gave their teams rings. They have a crazy sense of entitlement, and that usually leads to them getting kicked in the face by dogs. So go ahead and take Louisville plus five and a half. I like that right there. Now, let's see who's next. Uh, let's see, Boise, New Mexico, new. I looked at Alabama, Texas. Going to be very good. Now, very interesting that the line is the way it is. I imagine it's going to switch up after a while. Texas going to put up a good fight, but it's Nick Saban. So no upset there. That's not even going to be on the list. Uh, I imagine somebody was going to ask me about that, though. Uh, but there is a, there are two more games that I want to get to. We're going to scroll through here. Uh, there are a lot of good games coming up this weekend. I am excited. It's already the second week of college football. Technically, it's three if you count week zero. Now, here's the second game. Uh, Missouri and Kansas State. I like Kansas State here. They look like a fun team. They look like a fast team. Missouri is going to put up a good scrap, but in the end... The Wildcats will take it seven and a half, so that will be the second pick. So pick Louisville over UCF and pick Kansas State over Missouri. My third game. And the mute there. Uh, third game, South Carolina, Arkansas. Only eight points separate them. Arkansas is a, I would say, a team to watch. They're going to be a sneaky team in the SEC. I like. What they've done this year in terms of retooling and keeping all their uh, upperclassmen. Uh, the coach seems to have that team finally whipped into shape. They've always had the potential to upset teams and had the potential to be an SEC uh, disruptor at the top. But it looks like they finally have it. It took a while, but they finally have it. Give me the Razorbacks minus eight. And you know what? Looking at the lines here, I'm going to give you two more. Actually, no. I gave you the three-piece, so let me go ahead and give you the biscuit. Let me give you the bonus biscuit here. And the bonus biscuit is... Let's scroll through here. There, are, Oh, my goodness. So many good games. Now, the bonus biscuit, ladies and gentlemen. The Tennessee Volunteers and the Pittsburgh Panthers. The Volunteers are minus six. And the Panthers are plus six. Now, in a game like this, normally the Volunteers, they have it. It's on the road. Uh, they can secure a big win like this. However, because it's on the road, and because Pittsburgh is pretty fired up after that backyard brawl with West Virginia, I see Tennessee being upset here. I see some upsets happening this weekend. The bonus upset for me, folks, Pittsburgh Panthers plus six. That is my upset of the weekend. I think they are going to knock off the Tennessee Volunteers at home. So let me let me recap for you. Panthers will be the biscuit over Tennessee. And my three-piece special for the week, Arkansas Razorbacks minus eight. Kansas State Wild, I mean Arkansas Razorbacks minus eight. Kansas State Wildcats minus seven and a half. And then the third piece to this beautiful value meal that's going to make all of us money. The Louisville Cardinals, another upset special, five and a half over UCF. I gave you two dogs, two favorites. UC, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Louisville. And Pittsburgh should be some serviceable dogs, in my opinion. Hold on. Where, where is it? Oh, I went too far. Hold on. 
I went a little too far there. Scroll back up. Uh, there we go. So, Pittsburgh will also be your dog along with Louisville. And then, of course, your favorites for the weekend. Scroll back up here. Arkansas over South Carolina. Give me that. And give me Kansas State over the Missouri Tigers. So, you have my NFL picks. You have my three-piece and a biscuit for the college side on Saturday. Folks, football is officially back and in full swing. Make sure you get your bets in. Make sure you kick back, relax, and take in the action because now the football season's back. It's time to get back to the money. Let's get back to the money. Folks, thank you all for listening. I appreciate all of you. I will be back next week. I may or may not have my co-host, but even so, you are going to get all of the NFL coverage. I'm going to wrap up all the games after week one. And then, of course, I'm going to give you the college football picks of the week next week. So be on the lookout for that. Little new segment I'm doing. I'm throwing in some college along with the NFL. We're going to do both combine this season, folks. I usually do the bowl season when NCAA wraps up. But this year, we're going to go week by week. Now, it's already week two. It's week zero, week one. But we're going to go ahead and dive right into it now. Now that the NFL is starting, uh, football is officially back. So let's go ahead and jump in on it now, folks. Enjoy the game Saturday. Enjoy the slate of games Sunday. It is yours truly, Jay Smoothie. And I will see you all next time. Until then, I am out.